welcome back to the Laird's channel and in today's video we're going to be continuing to look at the Oxford Group's racing parts that we're building using additive manufacturing, specifically this Q20 electron beam melt machine from our channel. The parts themselves, they're for Oxford Group's racing and they're going to be used on their new all-wheel drive fully electric race car. In the last video we looked at these parts and how they were made using this machine so if you want to see that, go check out our channel. But in this video, what we're going to be looking at is the parts being depowdered, having their supports removed, and of course seeing them for the first time. So without further ado, let's get into them. So today we're back with Steph, and he's going to be digging out the machine today. And uh, as you can see, uh, all's gone well in the build. There's a little bit of powder on the bottom of the chamber. That's nothing to worry about. That's that's quite normal in an electron beam machine. Uh, and what Steph's now going to do is put in the, the baffles to stop the flow of powder from the hoppers and he's going to start to uh, vacuum out uh, any unwanted uh, powder which is generally not that much uh, that we waste during this process uh, at, at most 1% of the powder and if you imagine there's you know, the 200 kilos worth of powder in there so it's very minimal. So once he's got rid of any powder which is slightly oxidized he's going to start using this clean vac to suck up the powder which he wants to keep and for in this case it's the majority of the powder build and you'll see that as the, the build rises all the loose powder that's not been semi-centered in the preheat uh, starts to flow away and what's remaining is just the powder cake and that's that's what's been semi-centered together during the preheat stages and that's encasing the actual melted parts. Now there's two melted parts in here. The build took roughly 30, uh, 30 hours uh, to build and uh, as you can see Steph's now just sucking away that powder and what we're going to do with that powder is it all uh, get vacuumed up into the same uh, hopper and then it'll be sieved for the good powder which is between 45 and 105 uh, microns in the particle size diameter. So Steph's now taking out the build tank. It uses the same uh, trolley that takes out the hoppers as well. And he's moving that into our powder room to put it into this white blast cabinet. And this cabinet's called a powder recovery system or a PRS for short. It's an RCAM unit, it comes with the machine and it's where we're going to blast that semi-centered cake uh, to reveal the parts. And the semi-centered cake, uh, generally the vast majority of it will be reused. It will be sieved for the right PSD and it will go back into that powder batch. Now you see the tank's just going to be locked into the system and uh, it's going to be pumped up. So there you go, that's the actual semi-centered powder kick. So the cool thing about this is it's using compressed air and the Thai powder from the same build to provide that abrasive action to remove the powder cake and expose the parts. And there you see them for the first time. And the process takes anywhere between half an hour to an hour, depending on how many parts you have in the actual uh, build time. But as you can see, here is the first close up of the parts and they look amazing. They've come out really well. And this is a good insight into seeing the parts combined with the supports. And let's just not forget, the sports are not there to support the, the part on the powder. They're there predominantly to remove heat from the part when it's building. There's a good insight into how many uh, supports we've actually put in there. And remember, they're on any downward facing uh, surface. And now we're going to look at a part which is often missed, but quite critical, which is the support removal of uh, the supports themselves. It's, it's not the prettiest of sights and a lot of effort goes into minimizing the amount of supports that are on a, a build and as you, you learn the process you learn where you can optimize, where you can remove. Uh, generally the removal of thumb is 
the, the, the more supports, the more heat transfer you're going to get uh, away from the part, and that'll stop it doing things like swelling up in the build. So these are the parts as they've come out of the support removal process and as you can see they look pretty awesome. Uh, we've got the nice NTC uh, logo on there, should be that way, that would make more sense. And what you can see is all the areas where the supports have been removed, they leave a little bit of a dimple. Now that's quite normal in the electron beam melting process and can be dealt with in a number of ways, whether it's hand finishing, using machines such as Dremel or uh, taking them out via the machining route. Uh, they might even be left in there if they deem that it's not such a big issue to have the parts there. But on first impressions, they look awesome. And just seeing all the various functions, whether it's the brake mount, whether it's the suspension, uh, or brake caliper mount, or whether it's the suspension, uh, mounts that have there or the fact that this is where the wheel and electric motor gearbox will be housed all in the same part that's been built in one piece is awesome and it's just a testament to the possibilities that you can get through additive manufacturing. Thanks for watching that video. Hopefully that was a good insight into what it's like taking the parts out of the machine, depowdering and removing the supports. And in the next video we're going to be looking at uh, how the part was actually designed in the first place with Oxford Brooks Racing and our in-house team here at the National Centre for Additive Manufacturing. So if you like that content, give us a share, subscribe to the channel and of course we'll be back in the coming weeks with the next video.